The anticipation at a racetrack grows as laps are completed, but anticipation isn't the only thing building. The roar of the engines, the squeal of the tires, and the race to victory lane. It all says NASCAR. A race car is much more than steel, gas, rubber, and speed. A race car is a science experiment on wheels. Talk about a high pressure job. The only thing keeping a car going 200 miles an hour down the front stretch and out of the wall are its tires. How the rubber meets the road determines how fast the car goes. And that's why tire pressure is one of the most versatile tools in a crew chief's arsenal. I was a tire man for a lot of years before I became a crew chief and I learned a long time ago that a tire low on air, low, not flat, low on air is a happy tire. Tires heat up. The tires on your car may reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit. NASCAR drivers make their tires work a little harder and the tires get hotter. We measure tire temperatures with the pyrometer. Um, it actually has a probe and we stick it in the tire in three different locations. You know, a tire over the course of a long run at a place like Martinsville with brake heat, it can be 220, 230 degrees on the surface. You know, a tire, while it's running on the track, can be well over 300 degrees. The increase in temperature comes from friction between the tire and the track. Depending on the track surface and the speed, Tires can get from 250 to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, or more. Your car owner's manual tells you to measure the tire pressure when your tires are cold. That's because hotter tires have higher pressures. Air molecules are constantly moving. In fact, the average air molecule is moving over 1,000 miles an hour. Tire pressure comes from air molecules moving around inside the tire. When an air molecule hits the inside of the tire, it pushes outward. While the gas molecules inside the tire are pushing out, the air molecules outside the tire are pushing in. The lowest pressures that we use at any NASCAR track up till this point would be a Martinsville, um, which is the smallest track that we attend. And we can get as low as uh, eight pounds on the left side. People in NASCAR talk about tire pressures in terms of pounds. What they mean are PSI, or pounds per square inch. Pressure is force, which we measure in pounds, divided by the area the force is acting on, which we measure in square inches. After a pit stop um, and the tires come over the wall, the first thing I do is take the caps off and check the pressure. A tire pressure rating of 23 PSI means there's actually about 38 PSI in the tire. 23 PSI plus about 15 PSI that compensates for the atmospheric pressure. Pressure is proportional to change in volume and change in temperature. We run radial tires, uh, which are very stiff, so the volume doesn't change very much. So as a result, as the temperature increases, so does the pressure. Higher temperatures mean the molecules are moving faster. The faster they move, the more often they hit the sides of the tire and the more force they exert. More force means more pressure. This increase in pressure is called the build. You'll see at most racetracks on the left side tires, you might see 10 PSI buildup from cold to hot and you might see 20 to 30 psi buildup on the right side tires. At Homestead the right front pressure will build up to like 23 pounds, the right rear will build around 15, left rear will be about 8 with this new car and the left front will be around 15 pounds. A right front tire at Homestead starting at the minimum inflation pressure of 47 psi would have a tire pressure of 70 psi at the end of a long run. Passenger car tires are usually filled with air, but not NASCAR tires. We use nitrogen in the tire instead of air because it's a drier gas and it hopefully will control the buildup of the air pressure during a run. We typically use nitrogen because it is the predominant gas in our atmosphere. It, if we have a single gas, you know, I think that it more readily allows us to calculate builds and, and, and effects from temperature and things like that. Even having a single gas in the tires doesn't make the crew chief's job any simpler. He knows the tire pressure is going to change, but he also has to figure out when. So you're trying to time when does the tire hit that optimal air pressure. Um, and also you're experimenting throughout the course of the weekend of do we get to that air pressure early? Do we sustain and get that air pressure late? Do we want to up that air pressure in the cold state to get it hotter sooner? and be a higher performance vehicle earlier in the run or later in the run. One reason drivers swerve during cautions is that they're trying to get a little extra friction and get a little more heat in the tire. The extra heat increases the tire pressure and hopefully gives them a little more grip. So if you've ever wondered who's under more pressure at the end of a green flag run, the driver or his crew chief, the answer is it's neither, it's the tires. <laughs>